Then going back to your point of where we acquire customers, uh, it's really about educating customers about what it is we do. Greg from BRB Travel, thanks so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. Pretty good timing that you're after coming in because I'm just back from a last minute booked holiday that we chatted about off camera. <laughs> yeah. Long story short, I won't even go into how much I spent on it, but me going to Kerry was more expensive than my girlfriend going to Vietnam for 12 days, and I was in Kerry for four. Yeah. So that gives some idea of how monumentally stupid I am, first of all, for the audience, yeah. right? But you have an interesting concept that solves all my problems and probably other people's problems as well. Tell us a bit about BRB Travel. So the, the concept behind BRB is really subscription travel. So mm. we're essentially the world's first travel subscription service. And the idea is to A, always have travel in your calendar. So if you think about the process of booking travel, the last 20 years, the travel industry really hasn't changed. So, you know, the onus is still on the customer to do all the heavy lifting. So, yep. uh, you know, all your research, all your booking, etc. cetera. And um, I think McKinsey had a, a crazy study recently that said that just to, for the accommodation purchase journey, last about 36 days just to book a hotel, which is crazy. Yeah. 36 days, and I think there's something like 45 different touch points. So that's different devices, different websites over, you know, four or five weeks. So when you think about a package, which is flights and hotels, that's a lot more than that. That's oh, going to take you six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks from start to finish. And if you think about what happens to flights and hotel prices during that period, they go up. Of course. So let's just say that you had a, I don't know, a budget of 200 pounds to travel when you start your research. If you book it there and then, that's fine. But then if you wait four weeks to book it, you know, chatting to your mates and all the misses and yeah. you know, checking reviews on hotels, etc. By the time you book, you need to pay three or 400 pounds. So the concept is like, actually, it's a fixed price value proposition. It's 50 pounds a month. There's no surprise. You pick your dates. It's not like it's going to cost you more. Uh, it's three trips per year, flights and hotels included, in the 200 pounds. So there's no extras. Um, and the twist on it is it's a surprise destination. That's very cool. So you control the dates and you control the break type. Uh, you also have a bucket list of destinations to put you in control of where you want to go to. So we never send you somewhere you, know, you don't want to go to. Uh, but ultimately, one month before travel, we reveal the destination to you. Ah, that's cool. So I, just, I noticed on the website you say you can also take the money out if you, ch if you change your mind. So it's kind of like a holiday savings account. What way was that set up with the business? Do you, did you have to get a license to hold people's money or, or what way? Yeah, so that, that money is set up in a, in a ring-fenced account, a okay. customer ring-fenced account. So we do not touch the money or recognize it until the trip is booked and the right. customer is back from holiday. Uh, that's just for legal, uh, legal reasons. Um, and yeah, and effectively, you know, it's, it's effectively a saving account. So, I mean, as a customer, you can imagine if you try to do the same, you've got your own saving account, you'll see the money there. Right? Yeah. So you get to the end of the month, let's we'll just say you've got a birthday, you want to go down to the pub or whatever, yeah. and you go like, oh, I'll dip into my savings. Mm. And what it does is that delays your travel plan. So by putting the money somewhere else, you don't see it. And um, the reason why you can take that money back is we don't recognize the revenue until you've gone on a trip. So essentially, you say you make your full payments, you have a trip, you know, we'll then recognize that revenue. If you make six payments, you go on one trip, the extra two payments that you've made will refund those to you. Right, and the okay. idea is to really differentiate it from, um, I don't know, a gym membership where you tie to a 12 months contract. You know, you, you don't subscribe. Go at all. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You subscribe to a gym at the start of the year. It's like, you know, January, I want to get fit for summer. Mm. You pay your 60 or 70 quid a month, and then by the end of January, you stop going. But then you pay for the rest of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of uh, course. And we just wanted to say, look, you know, it's a similar concept. It becomes part of the way you live your life. You save money every month, but then you're not tied to a 12 months contract. We're not, we understand that life is complicated. Sometimes you might want to uh, pause because you've got birthdays or credit cards to pay off. Don't pay this month. You can pause it for one or two months. Uh, and we it's make really it very easy to cancel, really flexible. Yeah. yeah. And so, so when, when I go on to, to do, because the reason I struggle with, with that, right, is one, I'm severely unorganized with most of my life, <laughs> right? Uh, but the other one is I'm quite, uh, I'm quite impatient, yeah. right? So uh, the likes of the, the trip I was on last time, I booked it 11 days before I went yeah. or something like that, right? And it's on, good oh yeah. So, so this in a way solves it, that I just, it just comes out of my account and all of a sudden it's in and it's four weeks I have to wait. Once it's revealed. Yeah, once it's revealed, it's four weeks. So the trip, you have to book it four months ahead of time. Yeah. So you have to give us your dates four months ahead of time. And then uh, it effectively locks three months out. So at that point, you committed to taking that trip and one month out, we reveal. Um, so. If, if you want to use, uh, so it's not something that's going to sort out your own whole holiday. So if you want your two week in summer, we're not trying to replace that. It's yeah. very like those short breaks. Um, and if, if you want to do stuff last minute, 
in the current model, it's probably not the right product for you. But mm -hmm. if you want to make sure that you always have travel in your calendar uh, regularly and that you don't have to do anything for it and that the money is taken care of, then yeah. that's, the, that's the right product for you. Who, what way are you marketing this to people? Um, is, is it, is it um, is, I say heavily on Instagram? Because it seems like it, kinda, it would fit quite well on Instagram with travel and, and all that sort of stuff. Is that generally how you? Yeah, so I think you have to look at the, you know, who are we trying to target with the, the product? So, I mean, it's really millennials and for the younger demographic, 25, 35, young mm. professionals, super busy. Uh, so they're all trying to build their career. Uh, very time poor and they'll have busy social lives. So actually ring fencing 10 hours to organize a weekend break, impossible. Nightmare. Yeah. Uh, so we know they like to travel, but they're very time poor. Um, those 25 to 35 year old do something that previous generations didn't do is group travel. And if you've ever tried to organize group travel I have, with mates. And it's, a, it's the worst. <laughs> I can't even organize my own that's, travel. That's it. Right? Imagine yeah. that with you know, a bunch of friends. Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, can you imagine like a WhatsApp group with like you know, five or six friends, 200 messages, no one can stay on topic. And then there's usually one person doing all the heavy lifting. Yeah, of course. And then that person gets blamed. It's like, oh, you didn't pick the right hotel. Yeah, so that's not the right never destination. Do that again. Yeah. And that's it. And like, you know, six months later, you're still trying to recoup the money because you paid the flights. And you say, you know, hey, Mark, can you give me the money back? And yeah. all that kind of stuff. So we, we've effectively solved that through the platform. We've created something called TripSync, which effectively you create the trip and then you ping a link to your mates, either via WhatsApp or email, they can join the trip. And the third element we help you save. So when you take that, the core value proposition really addresses the pain points of millennials. And that's really what we're going after to start with. What's been really interesting is that we already have about a third of our customers in the 35 plus bracket. So people in their 40s, 50s and 60s. And they all have the same problems. Like we're time poor. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, you know, we're time poor. We don't have time to organize our travel. That just takes care of it. So I, so, I love yeah. I, I, I can't see. Because when people come in for interviews, we, we always try and look at why wouldn't people use, right? I mean, we just ask a question, whatever we think of, but why people wouldn't use it. There actually isn't a reason for anyone not to use it because they're not going to spend any more money. They're going to get three trips a year. They don't have to spend ages organizing it. It's not a hard sell for you guys, is it? Really? Well, it really? is. Actually, it is a hard really? sell. So I think going back to your point of where we acquire customers, mm. uh, it's really about educating customers about what it is we do. Uh, so, you know, Instagram is a great place to do that through mm. kind of video content. Facebook is great. Uh, we do a fair bit of work with influencers. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, so actually it's, it's the perfect, it's, it's a lifestyle. So actually you send yeah. them away, they experience the value proposition, you know, and it kind of showcases what it is that you get as part of the experience. Um, and it's, I think primarily it's about building good relationships and good partnerships with a range of different brands. So you could think about a brand like, you know, a Revolut or a Monzo, mm. that'd be the perfect product for them. Uh, you can think about, you know, the financial services banks trying to acquire new customers they're currently giving you 100 pounds to switch your accounts mm. that's not very interesting no. whereas if the bank was giving you a free trip then that's a bit that's, more, that's a different story that's a bit different story so you appeal to a slightly different market so actually there's a range of different partnerships that we can do to to really grow the business and that's the kind of stuff that we're looking at now, to really start accelerating everything and then there's a that's the b2c play and there's a really interesting b2b play which works and businesses like perks yeah. and businesses yeah. so benefits Basically. you know if you think about Half of the workplace by 2020 is going to be millennials. Uh, current benefits aren't necessarily fit for purpose. So, I mean, you know, they don't care so much about dental mm. insurance uh, yeah. or a half price gym membership. But actually, if you said every four months, the business is going to give you a free trip. There's a big, there's a big thing around mental health. So mm. the business actually cares about you. We want you to go away, relax three times a year. Uh, during that time, no emails, no nothing. You get the reveal in the office that creates a bit of community and so that's great for engagement, but that's also great for retention. Yeah, you and come in the postcards on your desk. That's and it. Yeah, brilliant. it could be co-branded. Cool you know, if you're a business, so it could be like startup van in partnership with BRB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it creates a really cool engagement thing where you know people can start in the office having conversation. Oh, where you off to? Oh, I'm off to, I don't know, split. Oh, I've been there. You know, here's a bunch of recommendations, etc. That makes perfect sense. So, so we're going to be looking at potentially launching some sort of B2B value proposition there. Very cool. Well, look, we're going to link everything below. I encourage all the viewers to go check it out and the business owners as well for staff. Definitely check it out. Get in touch. You're, you're open to conversation. We are open to conversation. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank Appreciate you so much, Greg. Cheers. Cheers.